If you decide to beekeep biotechnically without VAOA and without using chemicals, then you have understood the philosophy that the beekeeper should subordinate his activity to the colony and not try to control the colony. That it is necessary to prevent the multiplication of parasites and viruses and not to do nothing for half a year and to digest the parasite in various ways after it has multiplied. In addition to this decision, we should think about another preventive step, namely the location of the hive. API's bees have lived independently since ancient times. It is logical that the greater the spacing, the less competition and less pressure from pathogens. And in turn, a greater supply of nectar sources. Classical beekeeping violates many of the natural needs of the colony. One of the needs is sufficient distance from competition. Part of biotech beekeeping is to think well about hive placement. If there are sufficient resources nearby the classical literature advises for the efficiency of the work of the group of bees. But then we have to accept that there will be more disease pressure, unintentional and intentional bee colonies, and certainly the stress of constant harassment from bee neighbors. When there is no more avoidance for lack of space, you are a small beekeeper, you are not concerned about the efficiency of beekeeping. It's a hobby and therefore it's about the well-being and health of the colonies. It is preferable to put the colonies at least a few meters apart. A garden has four corners and four sides. It is also possible to build four hides on a pallet with a trip each to a different side. In the worst case, if there is no avoidance to build a row, then at least put the comb each to a different height. Alternatively alternate different shapes, types of hives or different types of comb on the stands. Scattered placement, however, runs up against the convenience of beekeepers. However, the benefits of this placement are clear. When one colony becomes ill or is infected with a parasite, the others are protected from transmission. Then only one needs to be treated and the risk of transmission to other colonies is eliminated. Last but not least, when the hives are not in a row and you put a torp or board in front of them you have a perfect view of which hive the damaged bees are dropping out of. And I don't have to disturb the bees unnecessarily by opening and tearing the brood box. A damaged bee or drone in front of a hive are indicators of viral or bacterial disease. And a very good indicator of parasite overgrowth. Then it is easy to specify the disease by its symptoms and get the colony back in order. Beehives are only of limited benefit to their surroundings. At high levels, the bee begins to harm its surroundings, pushing other pollinators out of the region. It is therefore necessary to consider the so-called usefulness of the neighborhood and the number of bee colonies in the neighborhood. If fewer colonies are repollinated, they yield more, are healthier, and can carry their own stores for the winter. Kido Skleena wrote a hundred years ago in his book My Queen Bee, and I quote therefore, beware of overcrowding the apiary, it will do you no good. And he goes on to tell a story from a Swiss magazine where a beekeeper had 100 hives and was happy with the yield. For lack of time he reduced the number to 70 and the yield went up. Then he reduced the number to 50 and the yield went up again. Finally, because of old age, he had only 30 colonies and the average yield topped all previous yields. And he was still beekeeping the same bees with the same hives. In biotech beekeeping, the colonies are only interfered with two to three times a year. There is no unnecessary work and no loss of time when you don't have a colony in one yard but one, two, three, somewhere around the neighborhood, by the forest, even a few kilometers apart. I myself have individual hives hundreds of meters apart in certain locations. I have survived several years of brood rot pressure without major losses. It has devastated most of the bee colonies around here. If I put another hive next to a production hive, it is a brood made from that production hive. That will be reattached to it in the fall. This will replace the old queen with a young queen from the same colony, in addition to boosting the longevity of the bees. Not having colonies in a row also means a lot less pressure from the stalkers and predators that prey on the colonies in the underflight. 
A healthy colony standing on its own will be visited now and then by a wasp living nearby. But I don't see any major predation by robber bees. It's also because my colonies are overwintered right after the lime tree with plenty of honey reserves. And therefore in a phase of inactivity all summer. Speaking of choosing a place for the hive, I try to choose a place for the hives where there is shade in the midday and afternoon hours and also where there is no sharp wind blowing and where there is no constant cold air flow, e.g. through the valley around the stream. It is also not advisable to build the hive near a large nest of wood ants. Ants never give up and even a large healthy colony is constantly tested and stressed. In early spring, they can easily destroy the colony. The available literature perhaps does not even consider beekeeping according to the stated needs of the colony. Mostly it caters only to the needs and convenience of the beekeeper. Rather than the well-being of the colony. You don't read much about the well-being of the colony, the causes of robbing and swarming. Apart from overcrowding of the habitat, other causes of swarming and robbing are starving colonies and the associated honey collection or feeding at inappropriate times.